Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. We are going to be continuing with April's exceptional story, A Dream of Innocence. And we are currently going to settle into a dream we explored, Marias, in the last episode. And uh, we are going to progress here. The day's final train rattles over the descent bridge. The Marias lapses into silence. The new dreamer has promised to send you a dream tonight. Well, let's head to our makeshift bed. What somnolent diversions does the new dreamer have for you? The silence of the Marias reminds you of your own bed in London and the noise outside the windows of your lodgings. You fall asleep thinking of the familiarities and comforts of your own room. The fog is lifting, the purple black light brightens, and the safe and beautiful curtain of alkaline vapour dissolves. It happens nearly every day now. Those stronger than you have retreated to the deepest places, the greatest stores of essence. But you are left with the undiminished malice of the star. The light will reveal the secrets of your spinned flesh and sear your moon misers into dust. We'll wait for it to come. It will meet you at a place where the star's gaze will not reach. It will bring its own tiny, hateful light. It will bring objects you don't understand. It will spit correspondence words with accents improper to its station. By the standards of its kind, the star above is venerable and weary. It is tired of existence, but most of all, it is wearied of the life below in the pools. The fatigue of aeons makes its hatred no less deadly. You retreat into your pool and make the sign of simplicity, knowing it won't save you. But here it is. It covers its soft body in an object. The rhyme of places between stars clings to its wings. It will intone its offer in the correspondence once more, and you will agree and be undone. Wow, that was interesting. Obviously we're talking about the judgments and the stars there. Uh, oh, we can take a second look at the abbess's activities. We pass the abbess near the rubbery mason's workshop. She is admiring a granite sculpture of the observatory. The mason waggles his face tentacles proudly as she pats his shoulder. The abbess has told you why she created the Marias and how she worked on the entity that became the new dreamer. But is she being entirely honest about her motives? Let's investigate. She was not an exemplary spy. Your craft certainly exceeds hers. The new dreamer is currently avoiding the abbess, so you head out to investigate alone. The brightly dressed rubbery men of the Marias don't treat the abbess with any great reverence but she has some of their language, and they sometimes ask her to resolve disputes or to advise on relations with outsiders. While she is under the bridge, setting a sale price for a load of gathered glim, you go through her papers. The abbess has been corresponding with someone who doesn't sign a name and uses words cut from books rather than a pen. The terse messages are not coded and set up meetings. She is meeting her correspondent tonight, halfway around the east side of the lake. We can follow the abbess to her meeting. She has plans to meet a mysterious agent in secret. You will ensure her dreams of secrecy are folly. You find the abbess on a rocky hollow on the shore, not visible from the Marias. There's a neat little tent set up here, and the abbess 
is talking to a human looking figure. You creep forward and see the blue grey skin of a sea corpse. The abbess is meeting with a drowny. You conceal yourself behind a boulder and listen to the abbess. He dreams of far places, but if they insist, so be it. Allow me a few days to apply the essence, and then your masters can do as they will. Our arrangement will be fulfilled. The abbess puts a velvet pouch into her satchel. The abbess is keeping secrets from you. Perhaps she'll make her next move in the quiet hours of the night. Oh, we should probably wait till night. Here we are. A new subject for experimentation. Rubbery men lowering themselves into improvised tanks of yellow liquid are common sights in the Marias. But that figure is no rubbery man. It's the abbess. She scatters some amber into the tank from a purse and then moves to submerge herself. Uh, both options will progress the story. Ensure you have seen or you wish to in the Marias. Well, I think we made sure of that in the last episode. So, let's watch what happens. I mean, we can interfere or we can watch. I'm probably just going to watch out of pure curiosity, to be completely honest with you. What is this rogue spy up to now? The abbess takes an item from a pocket and throws it into the tank. It's a piece of black-green branching stone, like coral. She grasps the side of the horse trough and pulls herself below the surface of the thick yellow liquid. The tank rings like a cracked bell as the abbess kicks and thrashes inside it. The abbess is under the liquid for ten heartbeats, and then she lunges out, tipping the trough over. How has she changed? You step towards her to take a closer look. The abbess is before you, wild-eyed with fear and excitement, and glistening with yellow slime. Let's calm her down and hear her out. She is calling your name. You light a lamp. Her clothes are tight. She is a good half foot taller. Her hair is browner and her skin has a greenish tint. The abbess's irises have lightened to a yellowish brown. They've done something to me. This wasn't our agreement. She slumps against a rock. They were supposed to make me young again, wash away my sins, but I want to look after them now. Do as they tell me. I can feel their image growing in my mind. I have to tell you what I've done while I still can. Let's hear her confession. Listen for as long as she can speak. The abbess doesn't look at you as she speaks. The Marias was doomed before it existed. The flukes know that long exposure to London has changed some of the rubbery men. They're getting ideas. So, when I went to Flute Street, they offered me a bargain. And they have cheated me. I was supposed to be rejuvenated, and in return, I would lead those troublesome rubbery men somewhere out of the way, where they can be reclaimed in one action. You hear a splash, and then a high hooting screech from the lake. The abbess looks at you. Oh no, they've sent it. The war beast from the lake. Rubbery men wail in high alarm as something huge emerges from the lake. There's something of the octopus about the watery brute loping on ten legs up the shore, but those legs are jointed, and the blue-purple armour plates look like glim. The beast smashes down a pair of tents and tramples the inhabitants. It advances past 
shrieking rubbery men towards the middle of the Marias. Well, let's get to the lake. Perhaps you can help against this monster. You shake the new dreamer out of a dream, and you both run towards the lake. Through a crowd of panicked robbery men panicking in all directions. The beast pays you no attention. The lake horror snatches a robbery man with its suckered claws. You expect it to snip the hapless fellow in half, but the suckers attach and the robbery man screams as his body is emptied of fluids in seconds. The beast's claws pulsate as they reduce the robbery man's organs to nothing. The monster drops only empty green skin and a suit. So we can either help to drive the beast off, this must not become a massacre, or we can stay out of the horror's path. However, you may sympathise. This is hardly your fight. Um, let's help to drive the beast off. The beast is bigger than an omnibus, or a moon miser, but clearly has little grasp of strategy. It spends the first few minutes charging around, smashing tents and reducing a pair of unfortunates to husks. While you rally the rubbery men of the Marias into following you, they have little hope in fighting the lake beast, but if you are willing to stand against it, so are they. Your robbery army dodge around the beast as best they can, distracting it from you and a half dozen burly robberies behind you. You grab the beast's glim-sided plates, and with your tentacled comrades, heave the thing onto its back where it thrashes uselessly, as you unseam its soft underside with a tent peg. Human cunning and strong tentacles have vanquished the lake horror, but the Marias has suffered. Although perhaps only half a dozen robbery men were reclaimed by the beast, more have run away into the wilds. The abbess stands away from her robbery neighbours. She cannot look into their yellow eyes. Let's resume our conversation. The abbess had not finished her confession. The abbess looks at the corpse of the lake monster. That was one of the last children of the oldest place. The flukes will be furious now. They will turn the Marias to ash and memory. I set up the Marias to see it destroyed, and I hate myself for it. I'm becoming more a servant of the flukes, and I don't think I'll be able to make up for my sins when the essences are fully in place within me. The abbess glances at the new dreamer. We could save the Marias. They have offered another bargain. You might not like the price, though. Well, let's hear the bargain. The abbess is increasingly an agent of the flukes. The abbess addresses the new dreamer. I told the flukes about you and your dreams. They want you to go down to their home at Flute Street and dream of lost Axel for them. They want you to dream of their home. They want to know about it more than anything. If you do this, they will leave the Marias alone, forever. Now, Axile is an alien planet, from what I remember of the lore of the robbery men. The Flukes have offered to spare the Marias if the new dreamer descends to their home in Flute Street to dream of lost Axile. Well, let's speak with the new dreamer. Let's see what your friend prefers. The new dreamer fixes his mismatched gaze on you and says, I don't know, I don't want any harm to come here, but the flukes want me to dream of one thing forever, and I think that would be destroy me. I don't think my body will last long, but they might give me another and another and another. I had hoped to live in London for a little time. But can I live with these lives on my conscience? That too seems unbearable. You have lived longer than I. Have you known pain? 
Perhaps you ought to decide. You have experiences I do not, and perhaps wisdom I do not. Hmm, okay. The new dreamer should have a life in London. You will not sacrifice his future for the Marias, or the new dreamer should descend to Flute Street. The act will save the lives of many robbery men. So this is the age-old question, one life for many. Hmm. But then, would I willingly send someone to torture to save rubbery men that we already saved? From the creature? I mean, they, they'll come back, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so I think I will... I'm going to send them to Flute Street on the assumption that that is the choice that less people will make. And I am intrigued on if we will learn about Exile. The abbess nods at the new dreamer. There's a tent on the east side of the lake. Wait there. Someone will come and take you below. The new dreamer turns to you and says, I will pay this price even if it destroys me. I had such a short time with you. Remember me when you go back to London, for I won't walk there again. I will send you a dream if I can. The new dreamer walks towards the lake and does not look back. The rubbery Ben of the Marias have formed a ring around the abbess's tent, warbling and hooting. Inside you can see the abbess making a pot of tea. She is stonily ignoring the rubbery men, but her hands are shaking. Let's watch what happens. Rubbery men are not easily pushed to violence, but these are not conventional rubbery men. The rubbery men of the Marias have surrounded the abbess's tent. There are dozens of them. Among them is the drowny messenger of the flukes you saw meeting the abbess. The rubbery men pick up stones, tent pegs, steel tools. The drowny must have told them that the abbess betrayed them. A tentacle throws a stone hard enough for it to rip through the abbess's tent fabric. A triumphant hoot goes around the circle. The mob means her harm. So we can allow the mob its vengeance on the abbess. Perhaps this is revolution. Perhaps it is justice. We can exile the abbess. If you can get her free of the rubbery mob, you can let her leave. Where she goes is not your concern. Or we can bring the abbess back to London. This will go over and above your brief. She is likely to face retribution, but she has little choice when her life is in your hands. I think we will bring her back to London because that's the most interesting choice here. I'm not in the habit of letting mobs deal out justice here. An exile seems a little bit too easy, so let's bring her back to London. You lunge towards the abbess's tent, but the rubbery pack were expecting you. Half a dozen rubbery men bearing fence posts crowd close to you, barring your path. But you're too quick. You dodge between the tentacles and lunge into the tattered tent. The rubbery mob are unwilling to target you in their assault, and the stones stop flying. You pull the injured abbess out of her tent and march her out of the Marias. You push her out of the east end of the camp, which leads back to London. Perhaps she'll stay there, or head down to Flute Street. The robbery mob quiets. Some look disappointed at being denied revenge, but most have faces trembling with shock at what they nearly did. Let's return to London, there is little for you here now. Start the journey eastwards. The fog and cobbles of the fifth city are not far away. You take a final look at the muddy tracks and rebellious rubbery men that make up the Marias. A fishing rubbery man slides into the still lake, making no sound. The sacrifice of the new dreamer has brought the rubbery men of the Marias a chance at happiness. Perhaps they will develop a way of life that is entirely their own, 
away from human and flute. As you leave, you wonder if the new dreamer will ever send you that dream. And we can go for a Dream of Innocence, a debriefing with the Devilless. After you return to London, having let the new dreamer choose their fate in the Marias. The advertisement in the Sporting Millinery Review leads you back to your contact. You meet with the repudiated Devilless in the back room of a Vale Garden honey den, while the crowds outside hurry to the evening shows. You have the sticky, floored room to yourselves. The reputiated Devilless doesn't touch her honey. But we can tell her what happened. She is paying you for information about the Abbess and the Marias. The rubbery men have rebels, you say? That is worth knowing, even if the most likely buyer for such information no longer speaks with me. No matter. I can think of a half a dozen groups who might seek to profit from that. Good work. And the abbess herself? You tell the devilless about the abbess's return to London. She scowls. She's a loose end. The French won't like that. You got involved, did you not? She sighs. Why must they always get involved? Now, was there anything else? So we can tell her about the new dreamer, or we can don't. Make, we don't have to mention the new dreamer, but I think I'm going to say about the new dreamer. You're being paid for information, after all. Well, it's probably for the best. I'm no longer speaking with my former comrades. They'd be very interested in such impropriety. But in any case, this is solid investigative work. Such entities are rare, and the fact that they can be brought forth with that primitive, vital essence business is saleable in the right quarters. The Devilless looks sternly at you. But what do I keep saying about getting involved? The great game will surely destroy you if you keep acting. Few of us have long, happy lives. Your best chance is to merely observe. Well, we can settle the account, it's only fitting that you are paid. The repudiated Devilless blesses you with a rare smile. You've been quick, quiet, and efficient. If you can keep your tendencies in check, you have a splendid future as an agent. I will be happy to use your services in the future. The Devilless holds up a piece of paper torn from a journal. It lists your payment. A hollow Bible at St. Leonard's in a week suits you. Splendid. This is the end of the main part of the exceptional story. However, watch for an opportunity to come. Ooh. Well, unless I'm incredibly lucky, that probably won't be in the video. Because, well... Well, I, unless I mysteriously get it in the next ten cards, I'd have to wait for it. Let's just, uh, let's go through a few of these, shall we? And uh, I'm not going to read any of them because... You guys have probably seen these a few hundred thousand times. Uh, a dream about your home? Uh, that's just, yep. Approaching the gaze. A bewildering salon. I'm just going to steal that. Thanks. Uh, a reminder of brighter days? No, this isn't it. Take care of my plant. Yeah, have some bats. Uh, uh, Lord seized by tentacles is hacking free. Uh, plumb the firebrand secrets. Uh, yeah, I'll just do, do that top one there. Oh, a collection of curiosities. Hmm. I've never seen that item before in my life. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> And nope. Right not. And let's just greet the merry gentleman. I think that's because I'm going nuts because my nightmares are so high. But no, I'm afraid uh, no, uh, ex no little extras there. So I guess I will be ending this here. And I will say that I enjoyed this very much. The idea of a rebel rubbery man 
little settlement on the outskirts of London. And I assume I will find out what happened to the uh, new dreamer in a random card pull at some point, and I hope it's nice. I hope you all enjoyed this story, and I hope you go and play it yourself and try some of the other ways of doing things, and please let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to see what happens either side of this story. So please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.